Well, good morning, C3 Coffee Christ and Conversation. We're uh, just a couple minutes late, but um, we're home now. So we welcome you today, and we're so thrilled that uh, you have joined us or are joining us and later on this week. So um, we just wanted to say this will be our last Tuesday, just kind of up front. This will be our last Tuesday that we're doing this um, by uh, live stream because we're going to kick off our C3 small group starting next week, October 6th, the first Tuesday of October. And um, we're going to have this um, at a place, and we'll put this on Facebook, but we're going to have it at a place called Hello Coffee. It's the old Starbucks by the Autobahn right next to Bears Furniture off of, off of 41 right across from the Road Church. We used to have our C3 there when it used to be Starbucks. And um, it's an outdoor setting. They have nice tables there. I was by there this morning. Beautiful um, umbrellas. Um, and so it's very nice over there. And uh, it's a mom and pop coffee shop. So I say let's support them and let's get back into the small groups again. And uh, so we felt uh, this is probably one of the first small groups that we're going to be doing. So we're going to bring this outdoors. We originally was going to do it in the ministry house, but we thought, you know what, let's stay outside and the world, uh, we're still all under COVID-19 um, concerns. And so uh, it's a beautiful place. So we'll be posting that on uh, Facebook. It's called Hello Coffee. Just Google that. It's right past Mel's a little bit on the right-hand side of the Autobahn. And uh, that will be next Tuesday. We're going to start our small groups up again. But we welcome you here. And, Thank you, uh, Robert, for putting the sermon notes on uh, for us. So if anyone wants to follow along, you can yes. check out the sermon notes. Robert's always so great about that. And, and good morning to Becky, Sally, George, and my mom and dad. Hello, mother-in-law, father-in-law. <laughs> and there are, there are other people watching, but they haven't said hello. So, okay. I'm not, there's, so I don't know. <laughs> Well, once again, this, this is a small group uh, it's, uh, around our sermon, and so um, get the sermon notes out, and for the next 30 minutes, we'll talk about that. Travis is joining us, so we appreciate him coming and helping us. He was at Children's Church Sunday, so he had to do a, a, a crash course on the sermon real quick, <laughs> but he's a quick learner. Yeah, he's our high Well, that guy. is one good thing about being online. You can watch it yeah. anytime you want. That's right. So anyhow, we are um, in a series on Psalms 23, and uh, basically we are taking Psalms 23, and the whole Psalms is living in the goodness of God. And once again, I just really felt led a little more to uh, just get our minds, because of 2020 and all the craziness that's been happening, we're still in the middle of it, um, I just felt really like, let's get our focus on God. God's in control of everything. And Psalms 23 is a very comforting psalm. People love it. They request the most requested psalm in funerals. Uh, I, I memorized it when I was a boy. Many people, it's a very easy psalm. And it, it's, it's a great theology on the goodness of God. And so last week we started with uh, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. And so we stop there and... Really, what we're going to look at, Psalms 23, we're going to look at the nine areas of stress that we as human beings face in our life. And every one of those, there's, there's statements in those psalms that kind of is the antidote to that stress, you know, that we're facing. And so, as we look at the verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing. It's the stress of worry, being anxious. God knows we've all dealt with that this, this year. I mean, talking about me, how anxious of a person are you? And so, anyhow, I think all of our anxiety level has been up, ramped up this year. Even us as preachers and teachers of the Bible, yeah. we know we should not worry, but we do it anyhow. I'm just going to be transparent with you. This this year has been a nail biter to at sometimes, you know. Am I going to get sick? You know, COVID-19 and the whole thing that was going on. And so now the political unrest and just different things. So it's just natural for us, even as mature Christians, we get hyped up. 
And I think that's just a sign of the times. Yeah. The trumpet's going to blow any time. Yeah, the you. trumpet is going to blow. Yeah, and so, so anyhow, um, let me ask you, um, what are some unhealthy ways to deal with worry? Well, I mean, we, we all have worry. We, we all have our anxious level up. And, 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 and we looked in the Matthew chapter 6. Jesus did an incredible sermon on worry. I mean, the Sermon on the Mount, he took a chunk of that sermon and dealt with how really teaching us as Christians, you shouldn't worry. God's got your back. And God, and, and he gives us a botany lesson on birds. He gives us a, uh, or a biology lesson on birds, a botany lesson on plants. And he says, just look at nature. They don't fret one bit. And so Jesus is saying, if God can take care of the sparrows, the little birds that chirp around, don't you think you're more, you're more valuable than they are? So Christ was trying to get our minds on God, uh, on, on our Heavenly Father, that He will take care of us. And so, what, what was the takeaway? Let me just throw that out there. What was the takeaway from the yeah. sermon? Well, I thought one thing I like, kind of your question is, what's something we can, when we're worrying, something we do wrong or something we do incorrectly? Mm -hmm. You said worry is stewing without doing. Yeah. And that kind of stuck with me from your sermon. I thought that was, it was good, like sitting in a rocking chair. You, we're doing absolutely nothing, and then the more we worry, it's like the bigger the issue gets in our mind, and then we can start believing things about it that aren't even true, and it kind of blows up, and it's, like God says, don't worry, right? Believe in me, trust in me, know that I have a plan, and so I, it kind of stuck, worry is stewing without doing, and so what good does worry do? Like you said, the birds are cared for, um, <laughs> we're sitting here this more than clothes, and we care about so many things in our life that's yeah, there is important to look at and take care of, but there's nothing we need to worry about. And so it's, it's interesting that we, we sit um, at our house sometimes and we look at politics and we look at health and we look at what's going on around us and we can just worry, worry, worry. And the more we worry, it's like the worse it gets. And then the more we worry, then the more we worry. So yeah. as just, as, I like that point. Yeah. yeah. I think that worry also um, ends up affecting our health. You know, if you're worried and your stress level and your blood pressure is going up and and uh, it it just can I think it can affect a lot more than than just time and what a time waster. Yeah. What a, uh -huh. what a time waster to say, you know what? God, I have to trust in you that you're gonna take care of it. Well like you said, worrying is stewing without doing and um, it's 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 a lot of energy with no progress. Yeah. And when you think about it, I mean, really think through worry. I, I, I tell you what, I, I can get up, I can, 3 o'clock in the morning, I can get up and start worrying about stuff. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, you know, it's, you know, when we have our adult kids go off, you know. I, I had, said, adult kids are harder than Yeah, yeah, kids. you know, and, uh, yeah. and just different things. And I'm telling you what, um, and, and how many times have I woken up at 3 or 4 in the morning, just kind of my anxious level was up and just, and, and it's there, bing. And you're thinking about it. What does that do any good? I mean, really. Yeah. You wait, I could have slept. I mean, there's no productivity with that. It's just going over and over in your mind. You know? And when you wake up the next morning, it's there. You know? Um, so, I guess you can make a decision on it. I mean, after all that stewing over it. But, um, but anyhow, it is. It's just a waste of energy. When, really, when you think about it. Because if you're worried about the past, what can you do about it? Yeah. It's done. I mean, eat your crow. Deal with your consequences. I mean, really, it's, it's over with. I mean, I wish I could go back and do it, but you can't. Ask God to forgive you, make restitution, and move on. The future, you can plan for it, but you can worry all you want. You're not there yet. Yeah. And you know what it does? It messes up your sleep. It messes up right now. It messes up your productivity yeah. and what you're supposed to be yeah. doing. It causes stress. Yeah. 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 So I think Jesus, I mean, Jesus knew we were worry warts. And Joe yeah. Jackson says, for me, the focus is all turned upside down as we look at worry. If we focus on ourselves, which we do so often, mm -hmm. we will end up worrying, though it is hard to keep our focus on him. It is. It is so, especially, you know, Joe, I know you're, you know, you, you had some health issues there, and, you know, and other people that are watching, you know, you're dealing with, and, and that health issue is a reminder. You can feel, oh, uh, 
you know, or, you know, it's always there. And, and so it's, it's, it's hard to keep our focus on God. And the sermon here, we kind of get into that, and we'll get into that in a moment. How out of, out of the Sermon on the Mount here, Jesus kind of lets us know how we can get our focus on God. And this is the whole reason for this series. You know, <laughs> let's get our focus on the goodness of God. Let's somehow get our minds back on it. So, any scriptures that kind of jump out on you, that just kind of pops, that kind of like resonated, like, you know, I like that. I need to remind myself of that. Anything that's kind of, kind of popped out on you? Uh, Psalms 28, 9 right here, it says, Come save us and bless us, Lord, be our shepherd, and always carry us in your arms. You know, we're, uh, I think it was talking with Stephanie, we were talking about how the sheep, or maybe it was just me and Stephanie, how right across the shoulders, He's like carrying that sheep, right? And so a lot of times we feel our burdens right here. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is just like, let me just take that for you. I'm going to hang out with you. I can carry you. And there's, you know, we think about uh, the poem, Footsteps, all of a sudden the man thinks that he that God left him, but mm -hmm. really God was with him the yeah. whole time, carrying him. And, you know, when we uh, just want to take care of our babies, we hold them and things like that, just to know that God is holding us in his hands. I think that's just really refreshing to say. Sometimes you just need a good hug, you know? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Um, anything else? Yeah, I mean, one of, one of my verses I've loved for a long time, Philippians 4, 6, says yeah. don't worry about anything, which we've kind of covered. Like, don't worry about anything, right? But I love what it says after that. It says instead, pray about everything and how my mind works. I'm like, all right, you tell me not to do something. Now what should I do? And I love how God kind of, he gives that answer. He's like, don't worry. He's like, instead of worrying, replace that with prayer, right? And because sometimes in our lives, we, we want to we get rid of things that are unhealthy in our lives, whether it's relationship or un unhealthy things that we're trying to get rid of, but we don't fill it with things that are going to honor God now. We don't replace it with godly yeah. things. And so I love that this verse, okay, I'm, I'm not going to worry. All right, well, I've stopped worrying have you replaced that with prayer, mm -hmm. or have you just filled it with something else that doesn't honor God? Yeah. Have you with, right. with pride or with some whatever it could be? So I love that. All right, God says, "Hey, don't worry," but now I want you to pray instead. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think that you're worried so much that you don't know how to pray. And another uh, answer is a way you can pray is through worship. So you can put some worship songs uh, on your radio, on your phone, or, or on your TV or something. And then when you're worshiping God, that's like praying and. and and I think that really kind of helps, too. So sometimes when it's so intense, I'm like, I don't even know how to pray right now. If I push play, then I go, okay, I can at least talk to God through worship. And, you know, I, and I think and this sermon reminded me, because <laughs> I, I use this illustration, but it's kind of sunk in a little more uh, before. Worry is a warning light. Mm. If you can think of worry, if you, find, if you can catch yourself during the day, let's say you're watching the news and you're doing some, and all of a sudden you're like, <sighs> And the work, the anxiety is bumping up, and you got that phone call, and all of a sudden, if you can catch yourself to realize, uh oh, worry is a warning light, caution, caution. I'm getting my mind off of God's goodness, God's promises. I'm not saying this is not real, this is very real in front of me. The fear, the diagnosis, whatever is factual, we're not sticking our heads in the sand. But I'm noticing my, that my anxiety level is getting off the chart now. Yeah. If you took your blood pressure, it's boom, 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 boom. I mean, all of a sudden you can feel it. You know what? That should be an indication to us if we can learn to kind of recognize that and like shake us and go, mm -hmm. you go, okay, Russ, I'm focusing too much on panic and not enough on prayer. Mm -hmm. If I can pull that back and go, okay, God, this is real. <laughs> it's not good, but i got to get back on you yeah. and get that focus. And worship, we can either worry or worship. Two W's. Worry or worship. Panic or pray. P, P, you know? You, you know, just kind of. And so, to me, if we can just kind of look at the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. So, if we, once we see that, we can feel the temperature, we, however it affects you health-wise. When you realize, okay, Russ, I got to, I got to throw my favorite worship songs on, yeah. you know, and and that can bring it down and throw yourself on the arms of God, your good shepherd, and say, God, you got this. 
I noticed even for me when we were going through uh, some stuff in our own personal lives with family and just different things, um, it's beyond your control sometimes when people make decisions. You can't make those decisions for people. And after a while, it was a release for me Well, I just said, Lord, I just give it to you because I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, when I made that break emotionally, it's yours, Lord. Because really, I'm done. I'm telling you, there was a piece that came on and said, I got this thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God did have it. Because now, I see God working in things. I see the hand of God working on that. Just release it to him. And sometimes I think that when we're worrying and we're trying to do it ourselves and we're trying to put our hands in it and fix it, fix it, fix it, then it, uh, God says, uh, when you're finished, then I can do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So sometimes I think we hinder when we're trying to control it or, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to micromanage it, that we're trying to, that we hinder what God really wants to do because when we're codependent or there's a lot of stuff going yeah. on. And you know what? I think it's our maturity and our walk with God. I mean, as we grow and we're growing through this, all of a sudden you kind of come to this knowledge and you go, you know what? That is so right. I got to practice this. And the more you put that in practice, it's like some older guys I know, and even ladies that have been believers are 80 years old, and they're like, you know, they're, they, they've been in the Lord for 70 years or 60 years of their life, and when something happens, they're going, They're not worried about anything. Yeah. And it's like they have life under the belt. They mature enough in their walk with God that they learn how to do these things. In other words, they've seen God work enough that they're confident God's got this too. Yeah. You know? And we got, almost got to train ourselves. Yeah. You know, to yeah, do that. Right. Yeah, like you, one of the points you made is worry is unhelpful. Yeah. Right? Like it says in Matthew, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Yeah, okay. like what, what's it going to do? What difference yeah. is what, what ladies have understood yeah. that? Like if I worry, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and another thing too, and I, you know, so I got some flack uh, in the past on this. Some people got a little bit like, I don't believe that. Number five, or I had a hard time getting arms around that. Worry is unbelief. And that verse there, Jesus says, people who, do, who don't know God in the way he works, they worry over these things. Um, And then Jesus said in John 15, uh, 14, don't be worried, believe in God, believe uh, in me. Um, worrying is really practical atheism. And that's kind of a tough thing to do. I mean, say, so I'm not atheist. I don't know what you say that, you know. But as you worry too much and it becomes part of your life and you become a, oh my, and it, 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 robbing you of your, of your strength and of your emotions and you just get in it. You know, really what's happening is it's all about, I, I, I have to do it because we're, we're, we, we, we're not relying on God. And so, you know, well, and Jesus that, kind of I talks look at about that, that. I look at that verse a little differently. Yeah. And I just, and like, uh, worry is unchristlike. Unchrist. So I probably like, should do that. We, we try yeah. so hard to be like Christ and of course we're human, we fail, we You know, all the time. So when I'm worrying, I'm not being like Christ. So I don't necessarily, and I and I know it's just like, yes, it's unbelief, mm -hmm. but it's just like, okay, I'm just off track. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I just got to get back on track and say, you know what, I do believe God, and um, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And you know what? You might want to do that in point number five. I should have referred to my wife on this. Worry is unChristlike. Maybe you should instead of unbelief. But for me, I'm a little harder on myself. I look at this and I'm going, Russ, you're doubting God. And so to me, I'm looking at this as, you know what, I'm borderlining on unbelief here. Yeah. You know, I mean, this thing is getting into the weeds on me. I'm, not, I'm acting like God's not in control. So I kind of move a little more in the, not the prophetic, but, uh, you know, a little more harder, yeah. you know. Lisa, you know, Lisa says she learned that when she's not in control, she, she says, I'm not in control when I lost my husband, dad, and grandma within six months. I learned to take the actions that I could and give the rest up to God. And Becky said, there's a difference between concerns and worries. Yeah. So that's right, Becky. I think that's that, it. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah. That's good. So when you're concerned about something, yeah. uh, maybe it's just like, oh, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to pray about that. Go right into prayer like Travis was saying. When you were worrying, I think that's the rock chair. Take it to the next where you're like, okay, three days ago. <laughs> All right. This is taking way too much energy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's almost like you, you've heard the old joke about the hypochondriac, what he said on the foot, on his tombstone. I told you I was sick. That's the hypochondriac this. Uh, but I, you know what? I like that because we are concerned. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's sure. nothing wrong in being concerned. And I think there's that fine line that we that, that we realize that when we cross over, I mean, it affects our health, it affects, it fatigues us, it, it gets into yeah. the stress level, and we can't sleep, and then we realize it's turned from concern to anxious to worry. We're getting into the weeds there, you know. We got to bring it back, yeah. you know. So I think that's good. It's 9:25, and let's just real quickly just get on the, uh, uh, you know, of course. Here's why we shouldn't do it. And then all of a sudden, Jesus, in that same sermon, gives us some pointers on how we can uh, not worry. And um, being that we're in this uh, Sermon on the Mount, I mean, um, the, the, Lord's, uh, the Lord's Prayer. Psalms 23. Uh, Every day, ask him to be my shepherd. And, um, and Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd. So, you know, we need to say that every day. You know, Lord, you know, you know, uh, you're my shepherd. You're in charge. Yeah, you're in charge today. Going into a meeting, I, I, you know, so now, whatever you're going into, seeing that doctor, whatever, Lord, uh, this might, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but you're my shepherd and you're a good God and you're leading me. That's what a shepherd does. He needs, feeds, and meet needs. So God, you're my shepherd. And, I, I'm, and you're walking with me. I'm not sure about this conference stuff I'm getting ready to go into. This interview. Well, sometimes yeah. I think that we, we become confident in what God's called us to do, mm -hmm. but we forget that God's called us to do it. And so when I say, no, oh, I've got this, I've done this for years, and I know how to do this, and blah, blah, well, if I don't give that day to, to God in the morning, mm -hmm. just like, well, I sure can't do it on my own. And then all of a sudden, I, I have to remember, God gave me these talents in order to do what mm -hmm. he's asked me to do. Yeah. So I've got to depend on him, fall under his leadership, and... And when it does happen, when that conference turns out good and just different things, yeah. all of a sudden you look back at the end of the night, lay your head down, God has a good day, and you had you did help me. Yeah. You know? And then number two was give him first place in every area of your life. In every area. I mean, he has to be first place. I think and it might have been on this point that you said, like, a reason why we put God first place is, like, he knows the future. He knows yeah. what's going to happen here. Yeah, I mean, it, like uh, you don't want to hear a doctor go, "Whoops!" Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, my dentist one time was like, "Well, if you'd if you'd have pulled your baby teeth sooner, you wouldn't have had to have braces because yeah. my adult teeth are growing behind my baby teeth." And it's like, "Oh man!" So yeah. and and so I, I think that's good. It's like, well, why the answer people might ask, "Well, why should I give God first place? Why shouldn't I trust so and so? Why shouldn't I trust these?" Politics, whoever it may be, well, they don't know what's going to happen. God does. Mm -hmm. He knows yeah. your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. Yeah. And if you trust him and allow him to guide you and you put him first place, yeah. then, yeah, we're still going to have troubles in life. It's not like there's not going to be any worries. But God says, well, if you trust me and you don't worry, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to give you what you need. And I think that's really cool. And that's a, such a great reason to put and, and, God and, in first place. And, 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 and your whole life, 100%. You know, not just a Sunday morning, you know, my salvation and my heaven. You know, we trust God. Oh, I gave my heart to the Lord. I got the heaven and hell thing, I believe, kind of worked out. Trusting God that the cross is going to get me to heaven and it's by faith and all this. But then all of a sudden, how about your relationships? How about your dating life? Is he Lord there? All of a sudden, we don't, we, 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 a lot of times we don't, maybe that might be a revelation to somebody. Like, what do you know I never had? I never really let God be Lord of my relationships. I kind of was on That's my own on that. That's my, <laughs> whatever my flesh led me, you know. I did, but I never really thought about putting him Lord in my, how about Lord in the finances? Yeah. You know, God talks about tithing and giving and 10% and all of that. Is he Lord there? You know, and that's, is he, you know, or, or I'm still in control of that bedroom of my life. You know, come into my house, my but that room is off limits. <laughs> you can't go in that room, Lord. That's my that's my dating room. <laughs> you know, but how's that been working for you? You know, here we go again. You know, so I'm just saying, let him be Lord of every area of your life and watch what happens. And I think that sometimes when we don't let him be Lord in mm -hmm. certain parts, that we're missing out on something yeah. really, really yeah. huge. Yeah. There's a little picture that's going around on the internet, this little girl. Jesus is asking the little girl for her 
a teddy bear and she's holding it and she's like, I don't want to give him a teddy bear. And behind his back he has this huge bear for her. So it's, I think that's the thing. Sometimes life is good, but man, how great could it be if we allow God to really, really take control. Yeah. I love that scripture. He will give you what you need if you give him first place in your life. That's right. You got it. You have to give him first place. And you know what? And you know what? There's a lot of ifs. Because yeah. the promises are conditional. I will do this, but. Ifs and buts. Yeah. You know, that might be a good series, the buts of the Bible. <laughs> because there's a lot of buts. The ifs and buts? There are some buts. B-U-T, not two T's, but B-U-T, but. You know, and those but, that, that's where we're at. It's at the but, whether or not we're going to reap the promise. It's, it's our choice, you know, if we do this and we meet the conditions. Work, work on that series. Yeah. The butts of the Bible. The butts <laughs> of the Bible. Come up with some good graphics on that. Oh, we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I got my art team kind of working on that. Any ideas you can have. No, don't text me ideas. <laughs> yeah. So then, and then let's close it out with one more thing here at the end. And this is so hard to do sometimes. Trust Him for one day at a time. It's right out of the Sermon on the Mount. It's the last verse that Jesus gives on this great sermon on worry. And, um, and I love what the Message Bible says on this. In fact, they gave it to, you know, normally we hear it read like this. Don't, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will have its own worries. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So don't borrow tomorrow's troubles for now. We're still in Tuesday. You know, this, this enjoy the moment Tuesday. Because what happens is we, we are either in the past or out here in the future, kind of like, ah, but we're missing God's doing, we're missing the blessing in the midst of the blessing. God's doing some great things and we're missing out yeah. because we're not enjoying the day. Robert yeah. says the Bob Marley song says, don't worry, be happy, everything will be all right. And Joe Jackson said, looking forward to that sermon, Russ. The butt. <laughs> yeah. So, we just, uh, before we close out, I want okay. to make sure you remind the people about next week. Yeah, next week, this is going to be, uh, we're going to, we're, once again, we're going to start a C3 in our groups, in our group again. And um, the trackside donuts is not available for us. And we want to be still sensitive to the COVID-19. I know the relax, the uh, it's kind of relaxing uh, more and more. We used to have C3 at the old Starbucks um, at the Autobahn Plaza right next to uh, Bears Furniture. And it's right across from Grove Church on 41, right when you right past Mills a little bit. It'll be on the right-hand side of the Autobahn uh, Center. There's a, there's, an old, there's a coffee shop there. It's a mom-and-pop coffee shop. It's called Hello Coffee. Write it down, Hello Coffee. And I went there last week. They are thrilled that we would go there and, um, and, and buy coffee and do our Bible study there. But we'll help that little, that, that, that mom and pop outfit out there. They've been doing a great job there at their Starbucks. And well, we know that we said that it was going to be here. Yeah. And, and we originally did that. We're going to change everything. Yeah, and I you. know people don't like change. We said it was going to be here, but... Since it was inside, we just weren't sure with the social distancing and things. We want to make sure everybody can come that wants to come. And that coffee shop has a place outside yeah. that uh, we can use. So it's outside. Everybody can be far apart. And It's, it's um, a nice cover. Yeah. So we're out of the sun. And, you know, we're getting into our winter time. It's going to be, uh, the weather's going to be beautiful. Yeah. And we'll change it online yeah. today. And, and, and we used to have it over there. We had a great crowd over there in the past and uh, that's where we started our C3 years ago before Starbucks shut down. So anyhow, just we'll start hitting that. So I know a lot of people enjoy this uh, online. Maybe we can do it online. I don't know. but We're going to we try. We're not really sure how that's going to look. Yeah, because, you know, when you get in a small group, you got confidentiality stuff. And people, we want to make sure that people can share personally. But, uh, but anyhow, um, we, we love you guys. And we're just trying to get back to some normality here as the COVID is, you know, some signs there. Maybe it's, it's getting a little better, but we'll see. But we love you. We're here to support you as a church. I, I'm going to tell you this. God has blessed our church, really. I mean, you folks have been so wonderful in your support, not just financially, but your attendance. You've been very attentive online. 
um, our online services. I mean, God has really been good to our church in 2020 in so many areas, in so many ways. We're able to help so many people, our little small church, uh, just helping people um, financially and just benevolence and just different things. And it's all because of you guys. We couldn't do it without you. So you put your trust with us, and um, and so we will say we just want to say thank you for for, for being part of our, this beautiful church family uh, because you're you're the church you're, you make up this church called the Spring. So we love you, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you out in the park next Sunday. God bless you.